Hey, how's everybody today? And all my new accomplices. <laughs> oh, hello, buckle up, accomplices. I'm driving. So tonight, I'm just gonna uh, nothing serious. I'm just gonna tell stories like how this channel first started. Okay. Um, collected money in Ladner. Well, as you people probably have well imagined, a lot of my life I run a little bit on the fringe. Well, a good buddy of mine is, well, not a good buddy, whatever you want to call him, associate. When they had to go into this little town, Ladner, and uh, collect some money from some drug houses. So uh, he asked me if I'd come along and watch his back. And that's all I was there for. Uh, folks, I wasn't there to collect money from anybody or you know, I was just to watch his back and make sure he didn't get jumped, right? So we'd spent a, well, probably a couple hours in this little town doing what we had to do and had to go see somebody down by the wharfs and that in this big warehouse. Um, we pull in there and my buddy was going around the warehouse and I went over to the man door into the warehouse to open it and walk in and, and it was this bright bright sunny day and it was dark in the warehouse. As soon as I opened the warehouse door just like this and just made my first step into it, I felt a gun barrel right here behind my ear. The guy said don't move. Well motherfucker, you know, do you mind if I breathe? <laughs> somebody in a truck looks like yours in town collects money from my people. I said, yeah, I'm here with Roland. Oh. We okay. come on in. And Roland come in. We all sat down and talked and everything was good, but it was kind of a little exciting at first, folks. I hate feeling them steel gun barrels in the back of your head or side of your head. No fun at all, right? Um, oh. oh, sorry. Back way in, been about 78, I guess, I was working at a company in Northern Alberta. I stopped working for them, or whatever the reason was, I can't remember. I was probably chasing a girl. <laughs> but, uh, they decided they were going to keep $600 they owed me. In 1978, $600 was quite a bit of money. And uh, considering beer was probably, draft beer was probably 25 cents a glass. So $600 would go a long ways. Yeah, I was fine with that. But uh, the yard where I worked was way to hell, 20 miles out of town. Right. I went back there and I busted into the gate and busted into the shop and stole four sets of brand new tire chains for semis. I went into their brand new office, took the fridge, took the stove. So I think I got my 600 bucks. <laughs> Out of my folks. Right? You have to get paid one way or the other. Oh. One night I'm at my house and there's a knock on the door, of course I'm not expecting anybody, so I yelled, who's there? Somebody yells RCMP. I yelled back, fuck you. Uh, I thought it was one of my buddies fucking around right, until I seen these red and blue flashing lights. <laughs> Holy shit, it is the cops. Right? So they were to arrest me for uh, probably some stupid fucking thing anyways, but it was fine and they took me down to the police station. I had a, a paperback in my back pocket. I like to read folks, I read lots. Anyways, they're booking me in that and the cop just booking me. He takes my book. He says, you can't have that. I said, what the fuck do you mean I can't have that? It's a book to read. I mean, what do you think I'm going to do? Tie the pages together, hang myself? Like, what the fuck, right? No, they wouldn't give me my book. 
So the next morning the sheriff comes to get me to take me to court. It's like maybe two blocks. Oh yeah, you couldn't smoke in fucking jail either. They wouldn't let me smoke. This was quite a while in the early 90s. Anyways, so the sheriff gets me in the suburban and take me to court. It's about like three blocks away. He says, you want to smoke? Fucking <laughs> hey, anybody. Well, light her up. He says, smoke her before we get to the courthouse. <laughs> so we get to the courthouse. I'm down in a little holding cell in the basement of the court, waiting to go upstairs. This guy walks by with his fucking cart, full of books and magazines. So you want a book? Want a magazine? I guess they didn't care if you hanged yourself a court, did you? <laughs> Stupid shit. Okay. <coughs> this really ain't a story, but... Okay, I don't know if you've all heard the term one percenter. Well, one percenter refers to a magazine article that was done in... Um, it was probably the 60s, it might have been the 50s, but anyways, it was done in a um, newspaper in a little town in, uh, I believe in Northern California, where they had a, a bunch of biker party there, a big biker bash, and, you know, there were stupid things, like they, they'd set up a picture of a guy falling back on his bike with a beer and then fucking empty beer bottles scattered all around the motorcycle, and it was all a prop, right, a bunch of bullshit, but anyways, but... The American Motorcycle Association um, put out an article that, in the article they said, uh, you know, over this thing that happened, that 99% of bikers are law-abiding citizens. So 1% are meant uh, you're an outlaw, a criminal. Well, not an outlaw, because I'm an outlaw and I ain't a criminal, but whatever, you're a criminal, bad guy, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? That's people took us. So that's why guys have patches that say 1% and tattoos, I guess, and stuff like that to say that. But I'm a 1%er on the reason that the way I see 1% is I'll take a chance anytime. Even if there's a 1% chance it's going to work, it might just work because the law averages, right? That's the way it works. And to me, that's what a one percenter means. Okay, so I've uh, took a lot of chances in my life, and uh, things turned out fine. Right? Like you said, you just the law average. Eventually, whatever you're trying is gonna work. It has to. It's just the way the universe works. So I hope all you people are being safe, all my accomplices, and uh, I don't want to get anything serious really, I just hope you're all being safe, all your families well, all that stuff, and uh, I can't. <laughs>